Let's talk about time tracking inside of Jira. Did you know that in addition to story point estimates, you also have the ability to track minutes, hours, days, weeks, actual billable time inside of each and every one of your Jira issues. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or if you're a true Agilist and true Scrum person, and you don't want me talking about this stuff, let me know as well. But I am making this video because so many companies do like to track. They do build, they do labor tracking. And I just wanted to make a video to let you know that Jira has this capability built in and you might be able to leverage it for you and your team. Anyways, if you do want to support the channel as well, please make sure you share this video with your friends, your coworkers, your peers, your boss, your teammates, anybody that you know uses Jira daily that could benefit from having access to these over 300 videos. Make sure you share this channel, this video with them so that they can also jump in and all the Jira goodness. All right, let's jump into today's video. In order to do what I'm going to talk about today is you are going to need some sort of an issue inside of your Jira. So if you have a completely blank slate, it's not going to do you any good but you will need some issues. Now, I do want to explain this part very, very clearly. What I'm about to show you will work on any issue type, and hopefully, unless your administrator has made changes, this should work out of the box, which means you shouldn't have to make any configurations. Whether you're working on an epic, a story, a task, a bug, a subtask, whatever it is, every issue type out of the box is designed to be able to track time. So again, as long as nobody's changed it, it should work for you and your Jira. Now let's go into some details as to what I'm talking about. So as I mentioned, this will work on any issue type. So just go ahead and open up an issue and we are going to be discussing two things. First, I'm gonna discuss original estimate, which is really, really key. And then I'm gonna discuss time tracking. So let's start with the original estimate. The original estimate, where it is inside of your Jira is going to vary. Typically they're grouped. Typically original estimate is grouped with your time tracking. So those fields are usually closer together and they're typically in more fields, which basically means you have to come down here to the bottom and you have to expand more fields and then you'll find the original estimate and time tracking. Now, if you've ever used it and you filled it out, then those fields will move out of more fields and they'll be under details. But again, the location is gonna vary depending on your configuration but almost all projects out of the box should have those two fields at least hidden because they're usually empty. So the original estimate, this one's a really important one because unlike the story point estimate, which is really used to drive the metrics and the boards and the reports and everything else inside of Jira, the original estimate, while it can also be configured to do all that, is a separate thing. It's usually designed to track like labor and actual hours and more concrete numbers versus the story points is usually a pretty good wag. It's a, it's a wild guess of an estimated one nonetheless, but of how much effort relative to complexity an issue is going to take versus the original estimate. It's more like bare bones. It's very concrete. It's very just brass tacks. How many hours are we talking here? How much is this going to cost me? So when you go to fill out your original estimate, that's what you want to keep in mind. So for this example, I'm going to put I'm just going to put 25 hours. So that is my original estimate for this installing knobs for water temp story. Once you have that, once your original estimate is set, something really cool happens under time tracking. And let me show you that next. So under time tracking, we can now click into it. And this is going to bring up the pop up in order to be able to log your time. Now you'll notice that my original estimate is for 25 and I have a section to do my time spent here and then I have my time remaining. Because I've already logged time here, this isn't working the way I want it to. So I can put time, I'm just gonna put in five hours here and I wanna show you a couple of things and then I'm gonna circle back and I'm gonna show you what a peer, what a brand new story looks like when I haven't contaminated with pre-filled out time. This technique is gonna work either way, right? So the main thing that I want to convey here, though, is that when you come to time spent, your user, the person that's working on something, is going to come in and say how many hours, minutes, days, or weeks they worked on a specific task. 
And so somebody can say, hey, I worked five hours today. Here's the date that it happened. Here's the time. And I always highly recommend they put in a description of the work completed just so that you have that for your logging efforts. And once you hit save, you'll notice that this 10 hours has automatically increased. I can click save here. And this time tracking is now showing 10 hours. This is really, really good. This is great because now I know how much effort is being logged against this thing. And I know that it, I was supposed to have an original estimate of 25, which means I'm almost halfway there. Now let me open up a new one. Let me see if I can get a brand new one where I haven't done any time tracking, like in this example here. And I'm gonna put that this subtask is only gonna take five hours. Out of all the stories, this one's just a five hour thing. And so now when I go to time tracking, you'll notice that down here, things look a little bit differently. We now know how much time is remaining. So when I cl click in, and I, let's just say I spent one hour today, you'll notice that my one hour is spent, but four hours are remaining, and it's doing the mathematics and the calculation for me. Okay, this is something here. I'll click save. And so this is really cool because now I know it's doing this math based on my original estimate. It knows how much time I'm tracking and it's taking away how much time I spent against how much the original estimate was. And I now know if I am trending in the right direction or in the wrong direction. And what this also means is if I go and put in like 10 hours, you'll notice that this now goes yellow because it's basically a warning, right? It's telling me, uh-oh, you've overcommitted here. And so the estimate will go away and now the portion that is over the original estimate, as you can see here, six hours over that original estimate. So as you can see, this starts unlocking a lot of insights and a lot of metadata that you and your team can use. Now there's a couple more things that I wanna discuss here before we close out this video. And that is the common misconception is that only the assignee can lock hours against that ticket or that issue. And that's not the case. Anybody in your team, as long as they have access to that issue, they can log hours. And what I want to show you here is when you start logging time under work log over here, and you might have not never just clicked in here, you will now start to see all the work logs that have been coming in. So obviously I'm a team of one, so this is just me. But in this section here, Jerry would actually show you John, it will show you Jane, it will show you all the different people that are using this particular issue to log time against. So it doesn't care who's the assignee, it's just gonna track and record every single individual that has logged hours against this particular issue. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about before I close out this video is that you'll notice that this is one day, two hours, and this is one hours. I don't like this view. I don't like that this says that it doesn't tell me how many hours because most people that are, are using this functionality are talking in terms of hours. And so having the days, and then when you even add more than eight days, it starts to turn into weeks and stuff. It just makes the mathematics a little bit more challenging, at least for my primitive self. So let me show you how to change this so that you go from this pretty view to just straight hours. So we're gonna exit out of here and we're gonna go to the system settings over here. We're gonna go to issues. And then on the left-hand side, we're looking for time tracking. Inside of this time tracking, we're gonna edit the global settings. And here, the time to display format, this is where we're gonna go away from pretty two hours and we're just going to select hours and you can also change your default unit so that if somebody types in five because this is something that i completely forgot to mention but very very key is if somebody doesn't click in the the unit so you notice that i put 5h 10h whatever if you forget and you omit that age instead of putting five hours you put five minutes and that is a very 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 big difference so if your team primarily works in hours, I would get this changed so that it's always hours. That way you minimize the mistakes. That way if, if somebody is intentionally just working five minutes on something, they will be very intentional with putting 5M instead of just leaving a five. But yeah, this is something you definitely wanna communicate with your team and make sure that everybody's following a, a common pattern here. Otherwise, your hours are gonna be way, way off because 100 hours is different than 100 minutes. Right, and so make sure that you communicate, over communicate that policy with your team so that they're all using it correctly. But yeah, the pretty is what takes it away, right? The pretty is what makes it this four days, four hours and 30 minutes. I don't like that. I'm just gonna leave straight how many hours we're doing. Now this is, just to kind of close this video out, what I just did is a global change. So you can't have one team do 
pretty. You can't have one team do days and you can't have another team talking hours. This is universal. So everybody's going to be in hours or everybody's going to be in pretty or everybody's going to be in days. And you can only pick one. And that's pretty much it for this video. This is essentially how you track and log time in Jira, how you visualize it. And if you like this kind of video, let me know because I do have follow-up videos that I would love to make, but I'm just testing the waters with this one because most people just, again, most people watch this video because they're scrum masters and we're talking story points, but there's a couple of different configurations that we can do and there's some benefits and some, some uh, more administrative things that can come out of Jira when you are using it to track time as well. If you like this video, make sure you smash that like button. If you made it this far and you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you share this video with your managers, with your project managers, with your program managers, with anybody that you know might benefit from gaining this valuable knowledge. Make sure you share it with them. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.